on people that are making news, leading change in the Indian country. My name is Levi Rickard, and I am the publisher and editor of Native News Online. I uh, have some distinguished guests with us today. And is joining us is uh, Orrin Lyons, who's from the Onondaga Nation, who is a faith keeper of the Turtle Clan, who co-founded the Iroquois Nationals. And uh, his son, Rex Lyons, who is the president and spokesperson for the Iroquois National Development Group. Welcome, gentlemen. How are you today? We're good. Thank We're you. Good. Thank you. And uh, recently, the Iroquois Nationals changed the name to Haudenosaunee and Nationals. Could you tell us, Orrin, a little bit why you changed the name? Well, it was a... Um... It was a, a kind of a natural uh, involvement over a period of time. The uh, Haudenosaunee is uh, probably the oldest uh, confederation based on peace and friendship and democracy in the world. Uh, they're trying to pinpoint the exact time, uh, at least maybe 15 or 1600 years ago. And the, um, the Haudenosaunee is uh, the proper name of our confederation. The French called us Iroquois and the English call us Six Nations. And we have the Six Nations, which starts in the east with the Mohawks. Next to them heading west is the Oneida. In the center of the council fire, central fire is the Onondaga. To the west of us is the uh, Cayuga to the west of the Cayuga, and uh, the, what we call the western door of the Confederation, is the Seneca. In uh, 1712, 1713, the Tuscarora joined our Confederation. So that's when we became the Six Nations. So there's a lot of confusion out there as to who we are, but uh, Haudenosaunee is our proper name. And we just, uh, uh, I think it's about time that the, the world learns that, and we're about to instruct them. Well, thank you for that, Orrin. And, and I understand that you are getting the team, you and Rex are getting the team ready to be uh, run for the Olympics. And your team was kind enough to send over a very nice video that we're going to show right now. And uh, uh, it's called Run to the Olympics. All right. People might know us as the Iroquois, but who we've always been is in the show. Iroquois Confederacy, a council of six Native American tribes living in upstate New York and Canada. We are the oldest continuous democracy on the planet. That's the gift that we gave to the world, that and lacrosse. cosmology of our history, the game has started on the other side of creation. It's an indigenous game. It's very important to our culture. It's part of our ceremony. It's part of our medicine. It's fundamental to who we are. This game has been with us since the beginning. It's a privilege to play. It really is. Our players are internationally known for a reason. Because they are. <laughs> to describe the difference and the uniqueness of the way they handled the pill. The passes they make that they shouldn't be able to make. It is a beautiful thing to watch. It's not your traditional type of lacrosse. We're able to compete on a world-class level. There's a goal! Miles Thompson! Oh my goodness! Our player pool is, is very small. 130 players that we have to choose 26. Where the U.S. has 500,000 lacrosse players and Canada has uh, 200,000. That's pretty extraordinary odds, and, and now third in the world. The cross lands on the slate for the World Games in 2022, and you would think as rank number three, they'd be on the invitation list. What World happened? Across the World Games announced the eight men's and eight women's teams that would be participating. The Iroquois Nationals were not included. I kind of remember thinking back to that now. I legitimately laughed. Shock, honestly. I was like, this can't be right. This is... Someone made a mistake or something. And I sort of just thought it was a joke. And I realized it wasn't 
No joke, it was serious. World game, if you aren't aware, sort of a training ground for the Olympics. The Haudenosaunee team was excluded from the event as they don't represent a country. You put legal precedent and you cite the doctrine of discovery as to why you can call claim to the land, saying that I have no soul, that I am equal to a dog and a horse. And then you tell me I cannot compete as an equal in my sport that my people gave to you. It's a tragedy. The indigenous people of North America have been playing the game for hundreds of years. They have gifted the game of lacrosse to the rest of the world. This summer, the Ireland lacrosse team did what no one expected, pulling out of the 2022 World Games. We're willing to voluntarily vacate our position in this tournament to enable the pathway for the participation of the Iroquois nationals. We're getting them, boy. We're getting them. We're out working them, boy. They weren't included in the world championships on the original calendar. As of now, we got to fight to, to cross the threshold to just get this team into the Olympics. For lacrosse to be the Olympics, the Haudenosaunee have to be there. The originators of the game have to be there. It means more to us than just a gold medal. Us being able to use the game of lacrosse as a vehicle for our sovereignty, to be able to travel on our own passports and be recognized because we're not Canadian citizens, we're not American citizens, we're Haudenosaunee people. me a mission. Not only grow this game, but help amplify indigenous issues that help learn more about our people. It's bigger than me. My family, my community, gives our people a voice to give, give that to them. We lost game after game after game, year after year. We've lost many games, but we've never been defeated. It's the biggest event in the history of our sport. Lacrosse is going to the Olympics. If anyone can do it against extraordinary odds, it's the Iroquois, the Haudenosaunee Nationals. Don't count them out, just watch. Wow, what a video. Such a bit of history in just a short piece. Please uh, describe the uh, road to the Olympics for our, our viewers. Uh, or could you start with the medicine game and how it came about, how, how you came about co-founding the Iroquois Nationals that had that name change? Well, the, um, the game itself, was. Uh, from the Onondaga Nation, we call it Kachikwa'e. That's its name. It means they bump hips. And uh, it's played, it was played on the other side of the creation while the earth was still covered with water. That's how far back the game goes. And um, the long history of it uh, has always been here as part of our cosmology. It's also part of our uh, ceremonies it has a special place in our our spiritual ceremonies as well so uh the contemporary game the secular game has always been played and then the uh, the the medicine game that we talk about that's a very special event and uh it's a whole different event altogether so um it's complex and the history is long and that's why it is but our, uh, we had a team in the 1932 Olympics. Uh, they were here, they were, you know, it was played out west. And uh, our team, uh, Six Nation team, was competing. Uh, the, uh, and we've just been with it from the beginning, actually, because there wouldn't have been a, a game at all if it wasn't for us. We taught the French, and uh, the English picked it up heavily. And it's been uh, developing ever since. And the issue of uh, the women playing, well, that's, uh, that's again, goes back to the spiritual side of it. Uh, the, the women are 50% of the society itself. We have a, a special society for the game itself. And the women uh, actually are 
major part of it, and uh, we can't have a game without the, me the medicine game. Everything is just, uh, it's, a, it's a partnership, I would say, and, and it's always been that way. But the, the stick itself represents, the wooden stick represents all the trees in the world, everything that grows, all the plants. Uh, the leather that's in it, it represents all the animal life that's in the world. So it's a composite of, uh, of the world uh, in that stick. So when the medicine game, that's what is invoked in the medicine game. All of those spirits and so forth for whoever calls for the game. And uh, the medicine game is the old style. There's two stakes on each end for the goals. There's a ball, there's the sticks, and then there's the teams. And the teams are made up of the uh, moieties of our, our clan system. that doesn't which side you're on or else. Very popular one is uh, the old guys, the men against the, the young men. And the difference uh, that makes between the men is any man that has a child is playing on the men's side. And, and if you don't have any children, if you're young, you're, up, you're playing over with the boys. And that's just the way it is. Well, thank you for the explanation, Oren, and that was wonderful. Rex, I want to ask, uh, now I understand, and by the way, Oren, you did a wonderful job last week when you received that award at the Lifetime Achievement Award at the Indian Gaming Association. And, and you were telling the, the audience there out in Anaheim that, uh, your team is what number three in the world out of seventy six teams. Uh, Rex, can you can you talk about uh, this this road to to get to the Olympics? And I understand you're going to Ireland this summer. And can you t tell us what's going on right now? Sure. Well, it was a long process. I was on the first team back in eighty three, and you know it's always been part of our aspirations to compete on the international uh, level and and be represented as a, as a, a nation. And, um, you know, it's been a long process where we only had the one team at, in the beginning was just the men's team before, you know, lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in the world right now. You know, the women are playing it uh, all, you know, it's just around the world. It's just exponentially exploding. So as, the, as uh, things progress, you know, you have more international countries playing the game. It was a natural, I guess, evolution that it would hopefully eventually end up on the doorstep of the Olympics. Now, you know, you have there's certain criteria for a sport sporting event to be an actual event, you know, a sanctioned event in the Olympics. And you have to have a certain number of, of uh, athletes in the Olympics. There's a certain ceiling. So that's why the the um, uh, the, the design of the of the Olympic game is a six V six. It's just a kind of what rugby had to do was just kind of condense it so that it would be easier uh, to perform and to facilitate logistically, all of those things, you know, uh, are part of the process. But as we move forward, you know, we have a heavy lift because, uh, you know, we don't have an NOC. There's uh, part of the criteria for the IOC is you have to be recognized as a, a nation state by the United Nations, which we don't have. And there's, uh, you know, we have everything else. We have our territory, we have our language. You know, we have our recognition. We have uh, treaty agreements with both uh, U.S. and Canada. You know, but there's a lot of gray area, and it's because a lot of these um, discussions are still ongoing and they haven't been uh, resolved. So I think that's some of the uh, hurdles that that befall us as a national team. That you know, it always comes down to the politics at the end of the day. You know, it's uh, the Olympics are heavily political heavily political, that's what we find out. And uh, just to, as you see, just to uh, feel the team itself. And so the, uh, when the United States was just becoming the United States, the first treaty of 1735, 1775, the eve of the revolution, they had a meeting with the Six Nations and uh, very long meeting is very special uh, event. I would say one of the main treaties of our history, uh, where we recognize their their effort and we said, okay, uh, we'll stand to the side. Their request that was that we stay neutral in a coming conflict, and we said that's a good idea. You know, you 
you you boys uh, duke it out and we'll uh, deal with the winner. And so uh, that uh, we, we had a treaty, 1775, it's well annotated, amazing treaty. You, you should see the respect they have for us at the time. And uh, they called us uh, a great nation. They said, you're wise, you're strong. We're going to make a nation like yours, very specifically. They talked about the fire. They talked, see, that's not in your history. Uh, the United States just ignores that. But the foundation is with us. And so I've spent a lot of time on that. But as we move forward, uh, the treaties that we have, your nation have a treaty. Nations have treaties. And we have over 375 treaties in this country, all, the, all Indian nations, right straight across the country. So of course, uh, uh, we're, we're a nation, have been a nation for years, long before I would say uh, probably the first democratic uh, nation in the, in the world. And uh, the women are involved. We're a matrilineal system. Uh, the clan mothers work with the chiefs uh, and uh, we have a, they have charge of the title. And uh, the clan mother has the power, the authority and the responsibility to remove that title from the leader if he is not behaving. And, and so uh, and <laughs> if that is an authority and power, I don't know. And we are also, as I say, uh, matrilineal. Now the United States is you still, still, the women are still fighting here to become equal with the men today. Of all of these hundreds and thousands of years of so-called civilization, the women here in the United States are you know, fighting to be equal. They could talk about the glass ceiling. <laughs> That's right. Equal pay and all that. Well, thank you for that explanation, Lauren. That was, I love that history, and I love how you tell the history. Um, but I understand that Ireland has given up their spot this year. Is that, is that correct? That comes from uh, the uh, the whole history of, of Ireland during the uh, when they were having the famine, a very famous famine. Sure. And uh, the Choctaw Nation uh, put pooled money, and they sent them uh, support way back in the eight, I think that was about 1865, 56, somewhere around there where they're having that famine. The Choctaw sent them money to help them out, and they never forgot that. And they have a strong relation to this day with the Choctaws, and so when. Uh, we had finally managed to to get to the point where they were they had to uh, put us into the con uh, into the contest for the World Games. Uh, the last resort that we heard from them was, well, the teams were already picked, so there's really no room for an, an additional team. And that's when uh, that's when Ireland said, "We'll step back and we'll give them their spot." Amazing. That's beautiful. That, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. Hey, Rex, can you explain to us, uh, tell us more about the women. They're up and coming and, and uh, it, it, they're brand new, I guess, relatively new. And well, relatively new. They've been playing, but like uh, was already mentioned, they had to, you know, navigate some some uh, uh, traditional boundaries with our medicine game, you know, where, the, where there was some concern about using the wooden stick. But now that the wooden stick's not part of the secular game, it's a non-issue. And more and more, I mean, the women are playing it all over the country. So it was really, you know, a challenge for us. Like, how can we, you know, help our own women play out the, our game, you know, mm -hmm. and, and be respectful and be mindful of the boundaries so that we're everybody's, you know, in step and agreed on, on having the women play the game. And now there's there seems to be no, uh, I would say, conflict or contradiction in, in ideas that everybody seems to be on the same page. And it was all, you know, a process because everything is, is like uh, – a process with us you know as you evolve especially when you come into anything that's contemporary and we're trying to participate in systems and processes that aren't ours that are not of our making so a lot of times our process is you know at the polar opposite of of, of the way things are run and done in the, in the westernized world and uh, you know we, we have to uh we have to deal with that and we've gotten very uh, very good at that and this is one thing that uh 
we're accustomed to hurdles and, and pitfalls and, and obstacles are nothing new to us and nothing new to indigenous nations around the world. You know, it seems to be, you know, the, the hand we've been dealt and we just deal with it and we always move forward without, uh, you know, w- without having any kind of a, a defeated attitude. We always go in with the attitude that we're going to get there one way or the other, you know, and we do. And sometimes it's at the 11th hour. And sometimes we don't go because we won't compromise our principles either. Yeah, back, back in 2010. That's great. And, and I, I guess I admire because one generation to the next. How do you how young do your 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 children get really start thinking about being lacrosse players, male and female? What how do how do you recruit so fast? And because I, I know um Oren, you mentioned last week in Anaheim that uh, the, the team that will go to the Olympics in uh, 2028 in Los Angeles. Uh, the kids are rough, roughly 13, 14 years old right now. So t- tell us about how you grow your team, how you keep that, that process going, Rex. How, how, how are you doing that? Well, you know, in our, in our process, when you're, when you're a male and you're born into our society, you're one of three things. You're either a speaker of the language so you can do the ceremonies, singer of the songs for the ceremonies, or you're a lacrosse player. That's how <laughs> fundamental it is to our culture. That's so beautiful. we have those little crib sticks. So before I could walk or talk, I had a stick in my hand. Wow. You know, this is how instrumental it is and fundamental to our, our, our society and our culture that lacrosse is. So when we're four years old, we have organized lacrosse, you know, and it's and it's challenging because, you know, four year, four year four year old, they have minds of their own. They're going to do what they want to do. But you always bring them into that space. And, you know, some are are attentive and others are a little distracted but that's our pro- that's how soon we get them involved in organizing and understanding the team spirit of things and, and working together in concert and you know we start establishing that at four years old so by the time you reach 10 years old you've got six years of experience of organized lacrosse so naturally and at a high level so you've got stick handlers and and you'll see that now more and more a lot of non-natives are, are looking to get their, their kids involved in box across, indoor lacrosse, because it's faster, it's more contact, it's close quarters, and you develop these better stick skills because of that. So that's oh. one of the reasons, and we've always played it. We've always played the box game in, in, in every one of our nations in Haudenosaunee territory. Everybody has a good team. Everybody has a youth development team, you know, and we play it, you know, and it's, and it's, and it's, uh, it's, it's extremely high level. You know, uh, very, very uh, expressive um, display of, of talent. Well, what's, you know, what's the schedule for the uh, team this summer uh, for the World Games? You're going to be quite busy, right? Well, here's the here's the challenge. A lot of our players, it's it's a it's an elite team, so all of, it's an uh, you know an all star team. So our players come from different territories. So all of them are playing pro ball, most of them, or Division One, Two, or Three in college. So we don't get on the field as a team. Till like weeks before the actual event. So it's always been a challenge. And, you know, it takes time, takes money, takes organization. So these are some of the things that we have to, um, you know, that are kind of challenging. But at the same time, we're playing at a high level. So when we do come together, it doesn't take all that long to gel. But it would be much better to have, you know, a year's of practice of, 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 the chemistry and getting everybody familiar with how, you know, how everybody plays. And, and it's, you know, we just be stronger because by the end of the tournament, it's very obvious that we've gotten better, but by the time we've, you know, hit, hit, hit our stride, the tournament is, 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 is at an end. A very important aspect of, of the Haudenosaunee uh, lacrosse is that the player pool is open to any native person in North America. So you can make the team, you can play. It's not just Six Nation. Uh, of course, the competition is tough, but it's open. And one of our best shooters in the past tournaments is uh, coming from the West Coast. Nice, nice. And I, I noticed Ernie Stevens, the uh, chairman of uh, the Indian Gaming Association, mentioned his grandsons are getting ready. So <laughs> we'll see what happens with that. That's great. That's great. Um, and, and to answer your question, Levi, you know, we have four events this summer. Um, okay. This is for the for the for the, the Haudenosaunee Nationals. First, it's going to be the Women's Championship held down in Towson, Maryland. That's the first event we have. And uh, second 
is going to be the, the World Games in Birmingham. That's the 6v6, and that's both the men and the women. And then in August, we have our U21s going over to Limerick Island. So there's four events. We have to move four teams, staff, um, you know, training, camps, all of this stuff has to be, uh, you know, provided for. So it's a heavy lift for us because normally you might have one, maybe two events in, in a year. Uh, might be men and women, uh, de depending on the year. But uh, because of COVID, things got pushed back. That's why there's four. So um, it's been it's been a little bit um, challenging. Up to well, this. The, the moving a team uh, from here to to Ireland will be roughly three hundred thousand dollars. That's what it costs to move that team, keep them fed, keep them closed uh, for ten day tournament, bring them, and fly them back and forth. It's very expensive. Extremely expensive. Yeah, and, and since you're not getting sponsored by the U.S. government or Canadian, uh, how do you finance these teams? Well, it's, been, it's basically just been by uh, soliciting support. Uh, I've been promoting this team from the beginning, and I used to travel the country to get enough money to get our team moving all the time. But now, you know, when we had one team, that was – Okay, it was tough to get that money, but now we have five to six teams, and uh, we're just going to need help and support uh, to get this, get our teams over there because we're actually we're re representing the native people of this nation. Yes, well, you know, tell our viewers, and then we will do a subsequent story of today's Friday. So uh, I think sometime this weekend we'll do a story to help promote. Uh, you know, act, actually ask our readers at Native News Online to help support the team. So, uh, Rex, real quick, how what information can you give them today? And then we'll you send me the link and whatever. We'll we'll make sure it gets. Yeah, out. we we have a couple of different ways to get it. We have a GoFundMe page, uh, Haudenosaunee Nationals GoFundMe page. We also have Venmo, uh, uh, so so that we can we you know we have sponsorship. We have a sponsor deck so that it can be high level. Uh, you know, people who might be interested in helping us, you know, Nike is our partner. Nike has been very helpful in, in, in organizing uh, some very high level conversations that we're having right now to get some um, some other sponsorship that are uh, that are involved in sponsoring Olympic uh, teams and Olympic sports themselves. And, you know, even sponsoring the host city. So, you know, it's all of these things put together and we're getting we're, we're this probably about. I don't know, a month away from getting our merchandise, our online, 24-hour online merchandise uh, store up and running. And it's been a challenge, and like everything, is because we're so focused on getting our teams. Like, we just did a thing in Baltimore, uh, you know, in the spring or last last uh, fall, just to kind of get a look at the 6v6, because the refs didn't know what it was going to look like. We didn't know what it was going to look like. It was a big learning process, so Canada, USA, and uh, the Haudenosaunee Nationals got together, both men and women, and we had a tournament, three-day tournament. And it was it was really, I was very pleased that it wasn't too much of a departure from the game we know and love. You know, it's much faster. It's like I said, it's condensed, it's shorter games. But, um, you know, it was also a, a process of the rules. Are the, Is this going to help the game, hurt the game? And it was pretty good. It was pretty even. You know, they're a very exciting game. It's much faster. There's, it takes some of the uh, whistles out of, out of play. There's not so much refs getting in the way of the game. There's there's no face-offs. There's just a face-off at the beginning of the game and the beginning of halftime, and that's it. It's basically like basketball, you know. So it's fast, fast break, run and gun. But um, you know, there's plenty of opportunity to get it to get on board and help us uh, fundraise, and that's kind of why we went out to to the Indian Gaming um, uh, Conference just to kind of get our other. Uh, brother and sister nations involved and make them aware that, you know, what, what we're doing and what we're trying to do as we move forward here. Well, thank you very much. And thank you both for joining us today, uh, Orrin and Rex. Uh, and Orrin, I have admired you for many, many decades. And uh, a 92 year old man out there doing it, working hard for Indian country is just very admirable. And uh, I say well, she made wish to you for joining us. And to everybody else, thank you for joining us today. Uh, you, you can check out this this uh, video later on Facebook, our Twitter account, and YouTube. If you uh, if your friends and family weren't able to watch it, but please spread the word for us and be sure to turn in next.
tune in next week for another episode of Nita Badashkwe, where we shine a spotlight on those who are making things happen in Indian country. Chi miigwech. Have a good week. <laughs> He's on a